Did you know that there is a quick way to stop that annoying pop-up that greets you every time you launch Steam? Go to Steam settings, then interface, and uncheck this setting. Do you also hate when Steam launches, it provides you with the store page instead of the library page? Luckily, you can change it. Go to Steam settings, then interface, and in the startup location, change it to library. Next time you restart Steam, it will go to the new location you've set. Have you ever added a random person on Steam, then totally forgot who they were when they messaged you later? You can add a personal nickname to any friend on your list, so you will always remember who they are, no matter how many times they change their username. Go to their profile and click on more, select add nickname, and type in a note that will help you remember them. You don't necessarily have to give them a nickname, you can just use it as a personal description for yourself. Did you know that Steam can show you your hardware info? Just click on help system information. This will show you all of your computer's necessary info like your CPU, GPU and more. If you click compare your hardware, it will bring you to the Steam hardware survey page where it will show you the most used hardware and software on Steam on a monthly basis. Now if you played with some teammates on a certain game and don't know how to reach them again, Steam has a feature to help you do just that. Click on view, then players. This will show you the most recent players you played with, as well as the games you played them with. This is handy if you want to add a player and have already finished your gaming session. This feature is not available to all games. If a game supports Steam matchmaking, it most likely supports this feature. While we're here, let me show you another great feature Steam has. If you play online multiplayer games, you don't have to launch your game just to find a lobby. Steam has its own server browser. Just click on view, then game servers. Select your game, and hit search. From here you can see all the active servers and connect to one of them directly, which will launch the game and put you right in. If you want to check your FPS but don't want to mess with third-party apps like MSI Afterburner, Steam actually has one built right in. To turn it on, go to Settings, In-Game, then scroll down to Overlay Performance Monitor. Here you can change where to put the FPS monitor on the screen. Select which performance detail you want to show, and adjust the text scaling to your liking. Ever wondered how much your Steam game collection is actually worth? You can check using a third-party website, but first you will need to make your profile public. Go to your profile, select Edit Profile, then Privacy Settings. Make sure both My Profile and Game Details are set to public, and uncheck the box that says Always keep my total playtime private. Now copy your profile link and head over to steamdb.info slash calculator. Paste your link into the calculator and let the service work its magic. It will show you a ton of details like how many games you own, your total hours played, and the value of your library in both its regular price and its lowest ever sale price. It's a great way to see just how much you've invested in your gaming hobby. The previous tip was to see how much money your games are actually worth, but this next Steam tip will show you how much real money you've actually spent on Steam. Steam tracks all the money you've spent from an outside source. To find your total, go to help then Steam support, my account, and finally data related to your Steam account. Look for the option called external funds used. Enter your account's credentials if Steam asks for it, then Steam will show your total. Just know that this total only includes money you added from a credit card or gift card, not what you earned from selling items in the Steam community market. Now who doesn't love a great deal? Sometimes Steam even has 100% discount on a game and here is how to find it. Go to the store page and click on the search button without typing anything. Then slide the price slider to free and click on discounts and events. If you're lucky, you might find a game here for free, so go ahead and grab it. If you want a better way to track all of the Steam sales, there is an even more powerful tool. Head over to steamdb.info and click on the sales tab. This tool gives you a much better overview of everything on sale, with advanced filters and information on when the discounts started and when they're set to expire. To find the biggest sales, you can simply click on the percentage filter to show the highest sales percentages. Now if you want the store to show games based on your preferences, click on your profile name and head over to store preferences. Here you can filter out the mature, violence, and sexual content from both the community and the store. If you scroll down, you can filter what kind of product types you want to see. As you know, Steam isn't just a massive video game store. It can host software. You can uncheck the types you don't want to see in the store. Here you can type in the tags of games you don't want to appear in the store. Did you know that a game size on Steam is completely different from its actual download size? That's because the files are compressed to save you bandwidth. So how do you find the true download size before you install? Just go to the steamdb.info and search for the game in mind. Once you're there, click on the Depots tab. Right here you will see the exact download size for each section of the game. Knowing this helps you manage your internet data way better. 
Did you know that Steam recently replaced its old family sharing with a new, more powerful feature called Steam Families? This allows up to 5 family members to share a single library. This means you can play games your family owns and they can play yours all from one shared library. To set it up, go to your account details, then family management and click create a new family. Once you've named it, you can invite up to 5 other family members from your friends list. They will get a notification to accept the invitation. Once they accept, everyone can start playing games from the shared library, which will be listed under a family category. Here is a quick way to find games you can play with a friend. In your Steam library, click on the advanced filtering options button, then scroll down to the friends section and type in your friend's name. This will instantly filter the library to show only the games that both of you own. It's perfect for finding something to play together. If your friend has a game installed on their PC and you want their game data instead of downloading it on your PC, it's pretty simple. On your friend's PC, go to the library and select the game, then right click on it and go to manage, browse local files. When it shows you the game files, just go back one folder and copy it to an external SSD or hard drive. Then on your PC, go to the common folder which is usually located on this path, then paste the game folder there. Go to Steam and hit install and make sure you choose the right drive where you put the game folder. Then Steam will start validating the game data and if everything is fine, you will be able to play it without downloading anything. Now if you copied the game and Steam didn't validate the game data or you're having technical issues with a certain game, you can force Steam to check if the game's files are correct. Go to the library, then right click on the game you want to check, then properties, then head over to installed files. Now just simply click verify integrity of game files. Steam will instantly start checking every file of the game. If there is any file missing, Steam will automatically download it for you to make sure everything runs smoothly. If you have some issues regarding a game that doesn't open up in the right resolution, you can have some commands to tell the game engine before the game even starts. Just right click on your game in the Steam library, go to properties, and you will see the launch options box in the general section. I'm using Counter Strike 2 as an example. Exec auto exec to automatically run my custom configuration file. No vid to skip the annoying intro video. FPS max 100 to set a specific frame rate limit which is 100 FPS. And W1920, H1200 to force the game to run at my desired resolution which is 1920 by 1200 pixels. Launch options can be very useful for so many games. You can go to this link and learn about the most common launch options. If you have lots of games in your library, there is a way to categorize them by using collections. To create one, go to the collections button right here and click create a new collection. You will have to name yours here and then choose if you want to manually add your games or let Steam create a smart collection for you. To do that, choose dynamic collection. Now you can add filters based on tags, features, categories and more. Steam will automatically add games that match your rules. Now just like I showed you in the advanced filtering option, you can also filter using your friend's name so you can only show the games that you both have. If you don't like a game in this collection, you can right click on it and go to remove from, then select your collection. Once you've made your collections, they will show up on the left hand side of your library, making it much easier to find the games you want to play. While we're in the game library, let me show you how to hide games that you know you will never play. Just right click on any game in the library, manage, then click hide this game. To see your hidden games, click view, hidden games. Did you know that Steam can launch games or apps that are not necessarily purchased from Steam? Go to the bottom left and click on add a game, click add a non-Steam game, then you can select your game from this list, or you can browse any .exe file you want. You can think of it as Steam being a launcher that enables you to put your non-Steam games into collections just like your normal Steam games. Now as you can see, the non-Steam game has been added but it doesn't have a proper logo and cover. Luckily you can easily change them. In the library, select your desired game and right click on the cover photo, then set a custom background and choose your custom photo and do the same for the logo. If you want to reset them, right click on the cover photo and select clear custom background and clear custom logo. Did you know that you can turn a game's trading card into a cool wallpaper for your desktop? Head to the games page in the library and scroll down to the trading card section. Click on any card to see a larger version. Then just right click on the image and select save screenshot as to save the picture to your computer. Now you have a unique high resolution image perfect for a desktop background. You already know that Steam has a big picture mode for large screen players but did you know that it has a small mode? Just click view small mode. This will turn your Steam app into a little game library so you can just hit play without any distractions. 
If you're having trouble configuring your game controller on Steam, go to Steam settings, then controller section. If you have connected your controller via USB cable or Bluetooth, you should see it here. From here, Steam allows you to modify some settings to your liking. This rumble option is essentially the vibration. Disable it if you're not a fan of it. And this option allows you to test your controller buttons and triggers, which is helpful if you're having issues. If you scroll down, you will see external gamepad settings. It gives you compatibility emulation for your different controllers. So enable the options for whatever controller you have. You can enable Xbox controllers here and PlayStation controllers here. If you scroll up and go to the calibration and advanced settings, you will see that you can calibrate your controller if you experience any kind of joystick drifting by adjusting the dead zones of the right and left joysticks. Now go to your game in the library and click on manage properties go to the controller section now most of the time the default settings for most games will be fine but if you're having troubles in your game you can enable steam input then go to the controller configurator select edit layout and here you can remap any button to your liking and finally did you know that you can start downloading games even if you're not using your pc thanks to remote download it's easy to do just fire up your steam app on your phone and go to the menu then library select the game and choose remote download as long as you're signed into the same account and the game is already owned and the PC is awake, it will start downloading. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.